Welcome to the 12th lecture for AC 1002. This lecture covers a uh, foundation, so we'll be looking at what happens underneath the timber frame and how we work out the detail of how a foundation is, is made and what the materials it's made of. The outer walls of the platform frame carry the majority of the loads for the building. So we know that the floors uh, are built as platforms and then they rest on uh, load-bearing timber frames. Um, we've seen that in previous lectures. The, the, the loads need to be carried then down through the frame, down towards the, the, the ground. And we need to design a, a foundation so that they can pass down into the ground. The design of the foundation depends on the type of ground, the height of the building, um, the loads anticipated and the location of the site. So there's a lot of specific information that you would choose to adhere to if you were designing a, a, a real building. But for the purpose of this module, we'll be looking just at a generic example. So foundation. In the, in the previous lectures, we talked about different floor types and constructions. We talked about a ground bearing floor where it's separate from the main structure and uh, doesn't need ventilation and passes all its weight down to the ground. And we also talked about a, a suspended floor, which is built with a void over the top of it. Um, and it rests on the, the substructure walls um, and passes its load sideways down in the same way that the timber kit would. So the foundations for each floor type um, are very similar, but there are differences between them. So if we look at the suspended floor, I think this example was up at the, the end of the last lecture, we can see that the floor connects in the same way as the timber kit does to sit on the inner leaf of the substructure walls. And then this passes down into uh, the foundation so the loads can be passed down there. For a ground bearing floor, it's slightly different. Um, only the weight of the timber kit is carried down the inner leaf of the substructure, um, whereas the floor slab, the large thing on the, 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 the right of the screen, as you're looking at it, um, doesn't connect with that. And we've got insulation um, blocking the, the, the kind of load path there. So it's, so it's putting all its loads down into the ground rather than into the, the, the foundation. So we'll be looking today at a uh, strip foundation and we'll be looking at the ground bearing floor example of uh, how to uh, how to construct this so we talked a little bit before in the previous lectures about scraping back the site and removing material and it's no different for foundations we we don't want to have any material um that's underneath the foundations that could rot um or uh, affect the foundations by um, by causing voids. So we need to get down below the um, topsoil level. Normally, uh, as a kind of generic example, we would say that you would take your the top of your foundation to sit below four hundred and fifty millimeters um, measured from the ground. Um, if we can get down below that point, then we reduce the possibility that the foundation is going to move about if the ground freezes. So in the UK, it's very rare for it to get cold enough for the ground to freeze below 450 millimetres. So we're usually safe going down uh, to, to that level to, to, to sink our foundations. But this will very much depend on what type of soil it is, uh, what type of building you're, you're building, how wide the wall is, uh, how tall the building is, what it's going to be used for. But in this generic example, we'll say 450 millimetres below ground. We'll assume that the bearing capacity of the subsoil is, um, is suitable. So what we would first do is, is dig a trench. So you would get a, a, a mechanical digger um, to, to scrape a trench of a specific width. Um, the engineer would have designed the, the, the width of it to suit the, the soil and the width of the wall and he would give you a, a specification of probably between 500 and 700 millimeters wide by 200, and 300, 200 to 300 millimeters deep. But it does depend very much on, on, on the building. 
um, and I've got my warning there that very, very, very generic uh, dimensions. Every building is different. There's no such thing as one foundation type that covers everything. So into that trench, we would pour concrete and that would form a continuous strip that describes the outside of the building. Um, most of the time, we would probably put reinforcement into the, the foundation because if you remember back to the, the lecture where we were talking about um, beams, they, uh, under load, they would have uh, tensile forces to the, to the bottom edge of the beam where they're bending, um, and concrete isn't that good at that. So we would put steel reinforcement in to, to help us deal with that. And then off the top of that, we would build our blockwork. Now, in this example, we've got two leaves of blockwork, uh, one for the timber frame, which is the, the inner one, and one for our outside skin, which is brick, um, and we're, the, the, that we're looking at. The, the width of these leaves are, are different because they have to match the size of the, the, the elements above them. So if your timber frame is 150 millimetres wide, then the blockwork underneath it has to be 150 millimetres. So it's passing the load um, down through the, the same uh, area. Um, if the brick is 100 millimetres, then your substructure wall should be 100 millimetres. And because it's going to be below ground, the, the space between the blockwork leaves um, would probably be filled with, with concrete. Um, and with a top sloped so that any water that gets into that void, and we're going to use that centre gap between the, 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 the leaves later on for, for ventilation, but any water that gets into there can then drain out. There's a little note in the corner that uh, often the outer leaf isn't built up until later. So sometimes you'll see a timber frame going up and it's just got one leaf, or maybe the corners are set out for, for the outer leaf. But for this example, we'll show it at the same time. So the bit inside the house, so the inside part of the, the construction is then backfilled with a uh, hardcore type one. That's probably the third time I've said this to you because I've talked about it in two other lectures, but um, you know, repetition helps, I think sometimes. And we would lay that up in layers of 150 millimeters um, at a time. Um, so if you're needing more, you would, you would do it in, in, in greater layers. And that forms a sub base for the floor. And then we would blind it. And as I said in previous lectures, the blinding's there to, to smooth off the top surface of, uh, of the hard core um, so that nothing can penetrate the DPM. We would have a, a, a DPM, which is the damp proof membrane, and that would run across uh, the, the sand, the floor. And then we also have a damp proof course, which is the, the element that's coursed into the wall, so like a course of bricks. It runs horizontally through the wall. And normally you would seal these two things against each other so that you would get a, a continuous uh, layer of uh, waterproof material that would be underneath the timber frame uh, on the blockwork and would be underneath the, the floor slab and insulation. So there's no possibility of any moisture entering from the, the, the ground. Next onto that, we would put uh, slabs of insulation so there would be uh, thick, rigid uh, floor slabs um, and you would need to make sure that the slabs were capable of um, taking the weight of uh, the floor slab and all the activity within the building through and passing through the insulation down to, down to the ground. There's no point in having a, an insulation which will compress under, under load. There is a little thinner piece of insulation. You can see um, it sort of, uh, passes upwards here. We can get that little bit of insulation there. And that's to form a, a boundary to stop there being any point where, where there's no insulation passing through the wall. So we're trying to wrap the, the wall entirely and avoid cold bridges. And next into that, we would uh, pour our concrete floor. Um, which would be 125 mil or 150 mil, depending on, on what the purpose of the building is. 
And we would probably also backfill the, the, the wall if we'd built the outer layer. So we're, we're filling in the material on the outside. So we're starting to get it to um, you know, look like the floor is complete without, uh, without any other construction to take place. And because it's a timber frame construction, we have to at some point start building in, in timber. And we would install our sole plate over the top of our DPC um, to make sure that it was protected from any ground moisture. And that would be secured with, with frame anchors. And the rest of the frame would be um, and then erected on top of that. So our, our uh, sheathing to the outside, uh, the various layers of construction which are covered under um, a, a lecture later on would be installed. And that would be the, the, the first layer of the timber frame going upwards. To the outside of that, we would add our uh, outer walling, which in this case is, is brick, but it could be uh, blockwork or stonework. And then to the inside, we would install uh, our finishes, so plasterboard and, and flooring and, and the like. So we can see in this image here, we've got a continuous trench um, that, that these guys are, are working in. This is a slightly odd example because they've, they've filled the entire site with, um, with hardcore because they probably couldn't get down far enough through the, 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 the topsoil. It looks like an island site, so it's probably uh, peat that they've had to dig out. So they've removed quite a lot and then they've built an artificial ground that they're then taking their foundations down into. But you can see the kind of thing that we're talking about. It's long strips of foundations. There'll be a wider part, probably for something like a, a you know, a, a fireplace or an aga or a doorstep or, or something. And then some of the internal walls will be supported um, or there'll be uh, dwarf walls that uh, need their own foundations. But effectively it traces the outside of the, the house as, a, as a, a point where you can then pour concrete into it and form a strip. So, in conclusion, strip foundations are the most common form of foundation for domestic constructions. It's very rare to find um, houses built these days that don't use a, a strip foundation. Um, and only those where the, the soil is very poor and can't bear a strip foundation would probably use an alternative. So strip foundation, a continuous strip of concrete, a trench that's filled with, with, uh, with concrete. And that traces the outside of the building and off of that the substructure walls are built. So aspects which you should take from this lecture are the sequence of construction. So how do we actually build a floor with a substructure um, and what, what comes first and what comes next. Um, we should understand some of the key components that are required and the, the methods that are used to, to put them in place and also some of the, the dimensions that are involved in foundation design. Okay, thank you very much for listening.